Sunday Feast class today at the ISKCON portal. Uh, Prabhuji is, I think, well known to all devotees. Uh, he's a disciple of His Holiness, Radha Govinda Swami Maharaj, who's a disciple of His Divine Wish, Shalom Sipakrantha Swami Prabhupada, their friend Acharya. So Prabhuji is spiritually very qualified and also professionally very qualified. He has a master's in electrical engineering, I think. Technology management, so double degrees, but uh, we know him best for his ecstatic and uh, evening Krishna Katha, and for his also, I think, something that's maybe not spoken about as much. Narottam Vilas Prabhu? 
Okay, I think. Hi, Krishna Paraji, can you hear us from Portland? Doesn't look like it. Can he hear? Amal Amal Paraji, can you hear us? Can you hear? Uh, I'm actually thinking that it's going to go up on Technology at its best. Hey, Krishna Prabhuji, can you hear us at this point from Iskand Portland? Like an extra foot higher, the ball to the right side. Jay Sachinan Prabhu is talking, uh, speaking now, and he's, he's asking whether you can hear his voice. Bear with us. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I guess I'm this is Jay Sachin Das from Iskan Portland. Uh, I, I think I'm speaking through Raja Raman Prabhu's phone. This is a sophisticated way of reaching out to you from Portland, Oregon. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Uh, Prabhuji, this is Jay Sachin Das, and uh, we, we thank you very much for joining us and delivering the Sunday Feast Lecture for today. Uh, it's been a long time since we saw you for several years, uh, but still, I guess through the wonders of Zoom, we're able to hear you almost very close to us at this point, not halfway across the country. But most of our devotees are well aware of Prabhuji and his lectures and following on the lectures on the Prabhuji's uh, YouTube channel, Amir in the Bus. But uh, Prabhuji is a disciple of His Holy Srila Govinda Swami Maharaj and uh, is well known throughout the devotee community for his ecstatic and thrilling life in Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, one thing I was mentioning before, beforehand is something that's very impressive is how Prabhuji can take sometimes very complex topics in Vaishnava Siddhanta and can explain them in a really straightforward, understandable manner. And that's uh, really uh, a great gift. So without further ado, I think since there's technology issues, let's just hear from Prabhuji rather than myself. His grace, I'm going to Prabhuji Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. We we'll look forward to hearing from you. Dear Jay Sachinandan Prabhu, is my voice audible? Yes. Yes, Is the voice audible? Dear Jay Sachinandan Prabhu, I am very grateful for your very kind words. Um, please forgive me. From the bottom of my heart that I couldn't make it in person to Portland. Um, it was my desire to, but as Jesus says in the Bible, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
So it, it was certainly my desire to be there. But uh, as you rightly termed by the wonders of technology, I'm very happy to be associated with all of you this morning. And hopefully in the future, very soon, uh, we will have the opportunity to come in person and uh, serve your community headed by Shishi Gornitai. I remember last time being there. I've, I've had the good fortune of being there, I think, only once. And the deities are Gornitai on the altar. I remember doing Kirtan in front of them. And it was quite, a, uh, quite an uh, interesting experience. I carry that in my heart. So thank you so much, all the devotees of ISKCON Portland, for being so kind and considerate on this soul. And once again, please accept my heartfelt apologies for not being able to be there um, today in person. Um, just before we begin, um, just a final sound check. Is my voice audible before we get started? Can the devotees there confirm? Okay. Also, for the devotees who are joining us live here at a very wonderful uh, residence of Chaitanya Sundar Prabhu and Jai Mataji, thank you so much for having us, opening the doors of your home, opening the doors of your heart for all the wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis this morning. <clears throat> we feel very, very honored and privileged because that tongue which is not serving the Supreme Lord in Bhagavatam describes that tongue is asati, is unchaste. So all of you are contributing in making my tongue chaste by offering it in the service of Sri Krishna, Radha Nila Madhava. So thank you for kindly joining me. Vancha Kalpatru Bhyas Chakrapa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Uttanam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Nilidam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupak Gadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna.
I think for some Mataji's here, the sun is on their face. Can something be done? <laughs> Vitamin D? <laughs> Okay. Now let's focus on the effusions on the face of the Lord. <laughs> That's it. Huh? Sripad Ramanujacharya, one of the stalwart Mahabhagavat Vaishnava Acharyas. Who appeared in the Sri Sampradaya thousand years ago. There have been so many Acharyas who have come in the line. But the Sampradaya still remains to be a Ramanujacharya-centric Sampradaya for the contributions that Sri Pada Ramanuja Acharya offered. A couple of hundred years after, in the same Sampradaya came a very great Acharya by the name Sri Pada Vedanta Desika. Sri Pada Vedanta Desikar was such a great Vaishnava Acharya. He has written works in Sanskrit and in Tamil. In one such work, Sripad Vedanta Desikar, he glorifies Sriman Narayana. He glorifies Mahavishnu. We are aware of the glories of Mahavishnu, aren't we? Something? Very little. How much ever we know, it's always very little. Because his glories are unlimited. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami Pad says, how glorious is the Supreme Lord? He says that it is possible to break Mount Meru with our forehead. And it is possible to hold the sun in one hand and moon in the other. But it is not possible to glorify the Supreme Lord as much as how glorious he is. We can never glorify him enough. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami also says, it's possible to count the snowflakes or the raindrops. It's possible to count the number of atoms on earth. It is possible to count the number of stars. It is even possible to count the number of ants. But it is not possible to count the number of qualities that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Narayana holds. Sri Vishnu. Mukti Pradata Sarvesham Vishnu Eva Nasam Shaya. Shastra describes there is no one who can give mukti or liberation from all pains and all calamities. There's only one name and his name is Shri Hari, Vishnu, Narayana. Of all the songs that the Sri Vaishnava Acharyas have written, you can see the prominence is found in the glories of Lakshmi Narayana. There could be different aspects of glorification of Sri Ram also. Sri Krishna also. But the glories of Narayana that have been sung and the prominence of the worship of Ranganath in the Sampradaya is profound. So Vedanta Desikar writes that Mahavishnu is very beautiful. Very, very, very beautiful. He says that anyone who has darshan once of the form of Mahavishnu they will spit at the thought of enjoying anything materially. Even Yamunacharya has written the same thing. Yadavadi mama krishna chetapadaravinda navanavarasadhamanyudyatam rantumasit That as soon as the thought of the form of Mahavishnu comes in my heart, Yamunacharya, the spiritual master of Sri Pada Ramanujacharya, he writes, the thought of enjoying this world becomes so disgusting that my lips curl inwards. 
and I spit at the thought of enjoying this world independent of the Lord. Vedanta Desikar writes that Mahavishnu's form is so beautiful that his face puts to shame millions and trillions and quadrillions of effulgence of the moon. That's how beautiful the face of Mahavishnu is. Vedanta Desikar, after seeing the form, has written, it's not poetic imagination. The difference between the poetry of this world and the poetry of the Acharyas is that this is imagination, what we write. It's the exercise, the gymnastics of mental faculty. But when pure Vaishnavas write, they see and then they write. How do we know this? How do we know this? Because Srimad Bhagavatam describes in the first canto, how did Vyasadev reveal everything in the Srimad Bhagavatam? Because Samadhi. It was seen in his level of trance in the heart. Chakre Satvata Samhita. Whatever he saw, he wrote. Even Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Gaurarti that we sing. What do we sing in the last line? Kiba Shiva Shukha Narada Preme Gada Gada How do we know this? That Shiva and Shuka and Narada are watching Mahaprabhu? Bhakati Vinoda Dekhe Gaurara Sampada Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying Dekhe I am seeing the Arati of Mahaprabhu performed by Shukadev Goswami, by Shiva, by Narada and they are all ecstatically choking and horripilating. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is not writing his Kalpana. It's not his imagination. Dekhe. After seeing the Lord he is writing. And therefore Bhakti Vinod Thakur when he was asked in Bhakti Vinod Vani Vaibhav there is a very nice compilation book of questions and answers. <laughs> you ask question to Bhakti Vinod Thakur and he answers. It's a whole book. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3 on Sambandha, Abhidaya and Prayojan. For those who don't have that book, you can purchase that book. It's a very nice uh, three part on Bhakti Vinod Vani Vaibhav. Just like we have Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhava, a beautiful work by Srila Bhakti Vikas Maharaj. This Bhakti Vinod Vani Vaibhav is a compilation of questions and answers asked and answered by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So in that, there's one question. <clears throat> How do we know our life is successful? You see, some say when I become a multi-millionaire, I'm successful. When I become famous, I'm successful. When I... Da, 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 so many X, Y, Z. When Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was asked, what is the definition of success? Safalta. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur answers. That day you know your life is successful when you have darshan of Krishna with your eye. When you can see Krishna's form with your eye, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, that day understand your birth in this human form has become successful. Bhakti Vinod Thakur writes, please everyone chant. Jana Masa Palatar Krishna Darshan Jar Bhagya Hoi Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Janma Safalatar. That person's life is successful. Safal. Whose life? Krishna Darshana Jar. Bhagya Hui Ache Akbar. If you can have Darshan of Krishna once with your eyes. Oh, that day understand your birth has become successful, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says. But now the next question will be, if you have Darshan of Krishna, what will happen? <laughs> what will happen to the heart? So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Vikasi Aridna Yane Kori Krishna Darshane Chhade Jeev Chitter Vikar Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, as soon as you have darshan of Krishna, vikasi aridna yane, the lotus of your heart will open and the lotus of your eyes will also open. Ridnayan. Heart will open in joy, eyes will open in excitement, looking at the form. Vikas means um, opening up. Vikasi aridna yane, the lotus of the heart and the lotus of the eyes of the devotee both blossom. 
Kori Krishna Darshane. Having darshan of Krishna. That my Lord, till now I had only heard about you. Till now I had only read about you. Till now I only chanted your names and worshipped your deity form. Till now I only thought in Vrindavan you live. But now I am actually having your darshan. In front of my eyes I can see this threefold bending form. Very, very beautiful, self-effulgent, blue sapphire, touchstone-like complexion. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Janama safalatar Krishna dare shanajar bhagya hui ache ekbar. That that day we must understand life is successful. Which day? When we can have darshan of Krishna, how many times? Ekbar, just once. And when we have darshan of Krishna, vikasi yaridna yane. The lotus of the heart will open. Kori Krishna darshane chade jeev chite ravikar vikar chade jeev chite ravikar janam safalatar Krishna darshan jar bhagya hui ache ek bar vikasi aridna yane kori Krishna darshane Chade jeev chite ravikar. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, when we have darshan of Krishna, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, when we have darshan of Krishna once, then the lotus of the heart opens and the lotus of the eyes open in excitement and the living entity stands with folded palms telling the Lord, that my Lord, for so many lifetimes I have been in this world without you. Now Swamin Kritar thos me varam na yache. I don't want anything. Now that you have appeared before me, please accept me and take me back home back to God. So <clears throat> what we were trying to say is that please forgive me. So what we were trying to say, <clears throat> that our pure Vaishnava Acharyas, they, our Acharyas, they see Krishna and they speak. They, after having darshan, they speak. It's not poetry. So Vedanta Tesikar, in his very beautiful work, he writes that Mahavishnu is very beautiful. He's very beautiful. He says that the face of Mahavishnu is as effulgent as millions and millions of moons. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. How is the face like? Millions and millions of moons. So where there is moon, there must be sun. Yes. So Vedanta Desikar says, on the head of Mahavishnu, there's a beautiful crown. And the effulgence of that crown is like millions and millions of suns. The crown is like millions of suns and the face is like millions of moons. And when they come together, there's the sky. And that dark sky are the locks of hair on the, on the body of Mahavishnu up to the, soldier, uh, up to the shoulder. Very beautiful curls of soft black curly hair. Since the face of the Lord is like millions of moons and the crown on the head of the Lord is like millions of suns. And the locks of soft black hair represents the dark sky. But then he says, now when you think it's getting beautiful, he says, this is just the beginning. Because in this world, you can see that the moon is far away from the lotus. But on the face of the Lord, the face is the moon and the eyes are the lotus. The two lotuses are stuck on the moon of the Lord's face. <laughs> How beautiful. But he says, these lotuses are very interesting. They are always looking at the devotees and opening up in excitement. Because the devotees of Mahavishnu, like Jaya and Vijay, they stand with so much love. And they stand with so much adoration of the Lord that the eyes open. You see, Venkateshwara in Tirupati he always has his eyes closed. But when he sees his devotees worshipping him so nicely, his eyes open. So Vedanta Desikar writes, On the moon of the Lord's face, on the top, is the dazzling effulgent crown, which is like millions of suns. The lo locks of soft black curly hair are like the dark sky. 
but on the moon of the Lord's face are two lotuses, which are ever expanding, looking at the love of the devotees. But so that they don't expand beyond a certain limit, you must have some boundary. Right? So the boundary are the eyebrows. Just to make sure that <laughs> Vedanta Desikar has written about Mahavishnu, the four-handed form of the Lord. And he says that the lotuses of the Lord's eyes, they keep opening, 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 opening. And there are banks in the form of the eyebrows just to stop. Also, he says, when the Supreme Lord thinks of the devotee, he weeps. So tears may come from his eyes. Vedanta Desika writes, isn't this quite fascinating? Because in this world, you can see lotus comes from water. But in the Lord's eyes, water is coming from the lotus. <laughs> How beautiful. <laughs> How beautiful. Then he says, only when you thought it is over, it is beginning. He says, now there's a beautiful waterfall. And what is the waterfall? He says, the waterfall is that of beauty. Beauty. There's a beauty waterfall, which is going from the crown up to the chest which means this place is very beautiful. It's a poetic way of saying. So he says, just like where there's the sun and the moon, it seems like from a distance, the waterfall is coming from there to the ground. So the chest is like the ground of the Lord as he is resting. And from the crown of the sky or the head, which is dazzling like millions of suns, the waterfall of beauty is splashing on the ground of his chest. Is everyone listening? But when there's a waterfall splash, what happens? What will happen? Let's say there's waterfall and behind that there's sun. <laughs> so what's happening is this is the sun, this is the ground, and there's a waterfall of joy and beauty on, up to the chest. Vedanta Desikar writes, on the waterfall of this water beauty, splitting through that is the rays of the sun of the crown, which causes multicolored beads in the necklace on the chest. Those are the multicolors formed by the sun rays of the crown splitting through the water splashing waterfall of beauty. Is everyone understanding? Okay, quick question. What is the sun? The moon. Lotuses. What are the eyebrows doing? They are the boundaries. Very good. The night sky. <laughs> waterfall of beauty. The waterfall is the beauty. <laughs> so waterfall of beauty is the question and the answer. <laughs> then when the sun rays of the crown splits through the waterfall, what happens? Different colors. And those are the multicolor beads in the necklace. Very nice. Beautiful. Then Vedanta Desik. Thank you, Tejo. Very attentive. Thank you. And Vibha also. Thank you. They are sitting like Jai and Vijay. <laughs> Guarding the narration of Vishnu Katha. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Then Vedanta Desikar says, this waterfall of beauty is unlimited. It's unlimited. So when you have unlimited gushing waterfall, what happens? It starts to flow. And it's flowing. And it's flowing. And it's flowing. But when it's uncontrolled, it becomes a flood. Right? But when it's controlled, you can see it forms a river. So what's happening? The gushing waterfall of beauty is falling on the chest and it can create a flood. Therefore, what happens is you need banks to support it and those are the hips. Just making sure on both sides, very beautiful curving hips of Mahavishnu. They're making sure that the waterfall beauty is properly channeled. But now when there's a lot of gushing force and there is some boundary, then what happens? It leads to a whirlpool. And that's the navel. <laughs> How beautiful. Who will say that their mind cannot be attached to the Supreme Lord by hearing about him? Right? Shravanam is the first limb of bhakti. It is the fastest limb of bhakti. It's possible you may chant japa, but the mind may go somewhere. But when you hear Krishna Katha, Krishna is entering through the ear hole, both ear holes. The gopis there in Brindavan, they are saying, don't come, don't come into our home. The motherly gopis, they're making butter and saying, don't come. And what is he doing? Jumping through all windows and breaking. And when people actually, um, 
Rupa Goswami writes this. Yadhyapi samadhishu vidhirapi pashyati natvai nakagramarichim idam ichami nishamyata vachuta tadapi kripa adhuta vichim. Rupa Goswami Pad writes, Krishna, seems like you are very um, um, sadistic. You have sadistic pleasure. Why? Yadhyapi samadhishu vidhirapi pashyati. Brahma is sitting in meditation, 311 trillion, 40 billion years, saying, my Lord, please come, please come in my consciousness, please come, and you're not coming. Yadhyapi samadhishu vidhirapi pashyati na. Although Vidhi, Brahma is sitting in meditation and calling, my Lord, please come. Swagatam, swagatam, su swagatam, idam asanam. He's giving asana in his heart. But the Lord is not coming. And the motherly gopis who are churning butter saying, don't come, don't come, don't come. And he's breaking through windows and coming. So Rupa Goswami Pad says, Krishna, seems like you're very sadistic. Whatever the person wants, you will do exact opposite. Brahma is saying, please come into my heart, you're not going. <laughs> but the motherly gopis, they're, um, they're churning and saying, Krishna, don't come. This is for our children. Just to increase Krishna's pleasure. At that time, Krishna is breaking through and stealing. <laughs> so we were mentioning this because the Lord, he will do exactly what is the opposite of what is the desire. So our desire, we want to enjoy this world. But at the same time, you're hearing little Krishna Katha. So what the Lord is doing, he's entering. To both dear roles. We are saying, no, I want to enjoy this world. He says, no, no, I will enter and clean your heart. And those pure Vaishnavas, they say, Krishna, please come, please come, please come. Krishna is not appearing and increasing their separation. Viraha Vedana, it is called. The pain of separation. Hmm? So, quick recap. What is the crown like? What is the like? The face. <laughs> The eyebrows, the eyes, the beads, the waterfall, the chest, the crown. So when this is hitting the ground, the gushing current of beauty has to be protected by the two banks. Those are the hips. And as a result, because of the gushing current, because of the gushing current, the Lord looks very beautiful. Because of the gushing current, the log, log looks very beautiful. And now, Samarth, what happens after that? Because the current is going with so much intensity, the eyes are looking like? <laughs> Lotuses. Even if the current is not moving, still the eye looks like lotus. <laughs> and when the current is caught by the two banks, then there's a whirlpool called as? The navel. Then Vedanta Desikar says, Now, Iha Bahi Agikoho Ar. Let's move ahead. He says, the, the thighs of the Lord. He says, They are like the branches of the wish fulfilling trees of heaven. Let's think about it. They are like the branches of the wish fulfilling trees of heaven. Why? Because wish fulfilling tree means if you sit under it, whatever your desire is will come true. So Vedanta Desikar says, when the devotee goes and sits on the lap of the Lord, like Prahlad, like Dhruva, like Lakshmi, all their desires are fulfilled. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj goes and sits on the lap of Nishingadev and all his desires are fulfilled. So the thai or the lap of Mahavishnu is actually a wish-fulfilling desire tree. You go and sit there and you make a wish, a kamana, it comes true. <laughs> then he says, moving for, forward is the lotus feet of the Lord. Vedanta Desikar says the lotus feet of the Lord are like oceans of honey. What are they like? They are like oceans of honey. Hmm? Thick honey. And what are the toenails like? Moons. What happens to an ocean when it's under the gravitational pull of the moon? There are tides, high tides. So Vedanta Desikar says the sole of the feet of Mahavishnu, it has small lines. But because it's an ocean of honey, and these are the moons, by the gravitational pull of the moon of the toenails, this ocean of honey has little tides, but being attracted, the lines become big at the sole of the feet. 
So the tall lines in the sole of Mahavishnu's feet are like the tides that are caused in the ocean of honey being attracted by the gravitational pull of the moon, which is Tomils. Very beautiful. Then he says, now what's fascinating? He says, from the eye, water is coming. Although in this world, lotus comes from the water, but for the eye of the Lord, water is coming from the lotus of the eye. But feet is not like that. From the feet, water doesn't come. Ganga comes. <laughs> says, from the eye, the tears come. But from the feet, Ganga comes. So that's also another contradiction. Because in this world, you can see from Ganga, lotus comes. But there from the feet, Ganga is coming. So much so that that is what Lord Shiva wants to hold on his head. One time, there was a big controversy in the house of Lord Shiva. Hmm? Amba kupyati, tata murni nihata, gange yamutsrujyatam. Kavi Kula Guru Kalidas has written this verse. You see, during those times, there used to be a competition called as Samasya Purti. Samasya Purti means in Sanskrit, the fourth line will be given, and the poet has to write the first three lines. Hmm? So the kings had very good poets in the court. And they, the poets would challenge each other for the entertainment of the king. So when Kalidas came, who was the king among poets, they gave him many verses. And one after another, after another, he won all those contests. Then finally, the king got up and he said, now I have a challenge for you. Hmm? What is the challenge? He said the word ocean, 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 six times. That's the fourth line. But he said it in Sanskrit. Ambodi Jaladi Payodi Rudadi Vara Nidhi Varidhi all mean ocean. Ambodi Jaladi Payodi Udadi Vara Nidhi Varidhi. So the king said, Ambodi Jaladi Payodi Rudadi Vara Nidhi Varidhi. Now you write a verse on this. Ocean, 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 ocean. No meaning. So in no time, Kavi Kula Guru Kalidas wrote this verse. Amba kupya tita tamur nini hata gange yamutsrujyatam. That one time in the house of Lord Shiva, there was a big controversy. <laughs> what was the controversy? <laughs> Kartikeya, the son of Lord Shiva, he went to Lord Shiva. Was everyone attentive? Okay. Um, Kartikeya went to Lord Shiva. The father is Lord Shiva. Kartikeya is the son. So the son went to the father and said, Amba kupyati. Mother is very angry. Lord Shiva said, with whom? With you or with me? <laughs> because the dynamics change. If it is with you, then I will take sides with her. But if it's against me, you take sides with me. <laughs> Amba kupyati. Oh, mother is very angry. Mother Parvati is very angry, said Kartikeya. So the father asked, Lord Shiva asked, why? So Kartikeya said, Gangeya Mutsrujyatam, because you have another woman on your head. Ganga. Huh? Every house has only one husband and one wife. But this home is interesting because there's one husband and one wife, but there's another woman on your head. Just like in Hindi, they say, Sirpe chadke batna, which means to sit on someone's head, to control them. So Kartike said, mother is very angry because there's another woman who's controlling your life, and that is Ganga on the head. So Lord Shiva said, so what do you want me to do? Kartike said, let her go. So Lord Shiva said, oh, she is taking shelter of my head and she's shelterless. She was coming from the feet of the Lord and I gave her shelter on my head. Now, if I tell her to leave, I have to arrange another home. You know, if someone takes shelter of your home, you can't just ask them to leave unless they have another place to be in, right? It's not ethical and not logical and heartless to do that. So Kartike said, no, you have to ask her to leave. Only then Mother Parvati will be happy. So Lord Shiva said, this is a big problem because unless she has another home, how can I tell her to leave? Huh? <laughs> so Kartike said, no, 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 that's not your problem. You just let her go. So Lord Shiva said, where will I ask her to go? So Kartike has a name called Shanmuk because he has six faces. So from all of his six mouths, he said, ocean, 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 ocean. Ambodi, Jaladi, Udadi, Varanidhi, Varidhi. Uh, he said the six names of the ocean from six mouths, telling his father, you don't worry about where Ganga has to go. She will go to the ocean, 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 ocean. <laughs> so 
So the controversy that the king had, the problem that he had, composed a verse with six oceans on the end, was very beautifully sold. Hmm? <laughs> the verse has reached its success when Damodar Prasad Prabhu gave a jai to it. <laughs> so Vedanta Desiko, back to the story. The face is like the crown, millions of moons. Billions of moons, trillions of moons, quadrillions of moons, like many moons. <laughs> what is the crown like? Millions of suns, Bill millions and billions of suns. Hmm? What is the hair like? The sky. What is the eyebrow like? What is the lotus like? <laughs> the eyes are like lotus. Okay. The waterfall or? On the chest, which is like, yeah. then when the waterfall is going from the crown to the ground, crown to the ground, quite poetic, the rays of the sun coming from the effulgence of the crown splits through that waterfall and causes multiple colored beads in the necklace. And this, oh, this beautiful gushing current of the beauty is held by the banks called as the hips. And because of this gushing current, it fall, it forms the, blah, 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 <laughs> the whirlpool called the navel. Then the thighs of the Lord are wish-fulfilling desire tree because all the devotees who sit on them, they have their desires fulfilled. Such a beautiful meditation. The feet of the Lord are compared to oceans of honey. The toenails are compared to moons. And the lines of the feet are actually small. Okay, listen to this. The lines on the sole of the feet are like small ripples. But being attracted by the gravitational pull of the moon, it causes now tides. It causes tides. And from this ocean of honey comes Ganga, who is held on the head by whom the sun asked to release to the... You know, in, in Indian um, daily soap, television serial, you can see if there's some melodrama, some dramatic scene going on, they'll say it three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing. What? 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 They'll replay it three times for better effect. But Kartikeya did twice of that. Ocean, 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 ocean. Six times. Then Vedanta Desikar says, this honey nectar ocean of the Lord's feet is pressed by the lotuses of Lakshmi's hand. Or palms. He says, Lakshmi Devi is a garden of lotus flowers. Ishanam Jagatosya Venkata Pate Vishnu Param Preyasim Tadvakshastala Nityavasa Rasikam Tatshanti Samvardhinim Padma Lankrita Pani Pallava Yugam Padma Sanastam Shriyam Vatsalyadi Gunojwalam Bhagavati Vande Jagan Mataram in another place, I said the same verse. This is from Venkateshwara Suprabhadam. I said the same thing in an ISKCON style. Ishanam Jagatosya Venkatapate Vishnu Param Preyasim. Everybody was looking. <laughs> is this from Bhagavatam? Where is this from? <laughs> I said, you know this verse. Then, Padma Lankrita Pani Pallava Yugam Padma Sanastam Shriyam Nobody could recognize. They're just sitting. And the assembly was dominated by Telugu's. They know the Venkatesh. Of course, it was in America. Yeah, correct. It was in America with a lot of Telugu's. Yeah. Was it in America? Yes, it was in America. <laughs> so many Andhra speaking, Telugu speaking devotees. So I said, you all know this verse. They said, we haven't heard. Then I said, let's do the MS Subalakshmi style. <laughs> Kamala And then when I came to Ishanam Jagatos, hair was standing on end, voice was choking, tears were coming. Everyone's horripilating. Huh? Seems like we went from um, Sri Rangam to Tirupati. In the span of like this. <laughs> so it is described that Lakshmi Devi is actually a beautiful garden of lotus flowers. Her palms are lotus. Her feet are lotus. Her face is lotus. Her eyes are lotus. 
she sits in the padmasan which is lotus position and she sits on a lotus and in her lotus palms she holds a lotus and when she does seva also she massages the lotuses of the lord's feet which are like nectar oceans did you all like this description yes the description is just beginning <laughs> vedanta desikar says vedanta desikar says from the whirlpool of the navel to add more exciting details he says it's quite fascinating that that waterfall of beauty which is gushing between the banks of the hips which is causing the whirlpool of the navel from that whirlpool of the navel comes a lotus flower on which there is one personality who is the creator of the whole universe <laughs> brahma ji ki imagine <laughs> recently i was talking to somebody and they were talking about a concept called as inner engineering so then i i told them that um, actually even in our culture it is inner engineering only because the greatest engineer of this universe was born from inner from the womb <laughs> from the navel of mahavishnu so he is the inner engineer uh, who is doing inner engineering the inside engineering of this world now vedanta desikar says this brahma ji who is appearing from the lotus of the whirlpool of the navel of the lord he is having some resp respiratory problem why because there is a constant problem what is the constant problem before that let's create some suspense and come back to it <laughs> vedanta desikar says the chest of the lord is like a very hard closet do you accept that the chest of the lord is very hard it must be very soft right vedanta desikar says when bhrigu came and kicked the chest of the lord mahavishnu said my heart is very hard but you're a brahmana your feet are very soft let me massage your feet that was the humility of the lord don't believe the lord his heart is very soft hmm? in humility he is saying i am very hard hearted actually his heart is very soft but vedanta desikar says the heart has lakshmi she is the jewel and therefore the chest is like the closet which is protecting that jewel <laughs> therefore it is hard in this way we can understand the jewel of bhakti or lakshmi the shrivatsa mark is the softness it is described that lakshmi devi by sitting on the chest of the lord she is increasing and decreasing the thermostat she is managing the compassion of the lord how do we know this tad vakshasthala nitya vas rasikam tad kshanti samvardhini she is increasing the tolerance of mahavishnu by sitting on the chest in the form of the shrivatsa mark lakshmi eternally resides in the heart of the lord it is described that the humility of lakshmi is so much that the lord gives us gives her position in the heart but she says my position is at the feet and she comes massaging the feet so still to replace to keep her to um, mark her position the lord keeps a golden hair on the chest representing this is the place of lakshmi you see when you go to mumbai uh, it's very crowded very very crowded i grew up there so if you're trying to catch a bus you know it's like there is some prerequisite preparation before that <laughs> like you have to be at the right place at the right time and all the bags that you have behind you have to put it ahead because you can use the pressure of your laptop bag to push people to get inside the bus huh there are some people who are very very clever these people are others are jumping in and trying to fight for a spot but then there are those who from outside the window they put their handkerchief inside and they make sure that the handkerchief falls on the seat then they will comfortably enter and when someone is already sitting there they'll say you can see that's my place <laughs> they'll say well, you know i sat here first even before you sat my handkerchief is there and that person will see there is a handkerchief it's like a eureka moment oh okay okay this is your spot although that person hasn't reached there he has a little handkerchief to represent his spot so when i think of that situation i remember how lakshmi devi's position is actually on the seat of the heart but she is at the feet therefore what the lord does like a little handkerchief keeps a shrivatsa mark a golden hair representing that this seat is already reserved for lakshmi 
To protect that, the Lord has the hard closet of his chest. But it's not sufficient to just keep something valuable in a closet. You also need God's to protect it. So Vedanta Desikar says on one side is the chakra. And the other side, there is a conch to announce the start of the war and to destroy the demon. Anyone who comes to touch the Srivatsa mark, the wealth of bhakti in the heart, there are two gods. Not just two gods. Mahavishnu has kept four gods. Sashankha chakram sakirita kundalam sapita vastram sarasi ruhekshanam sahara bakshas thalashobi kaustubam namami vishnum shirasa chatur bhujam four handed form. The conch, the chakra, the club, and the lotus flower. How many gods does Mahavishnu keep for himself? Two. Jai Vijay. But how many for protecting Lakshmi? Four. Four. And in Ram Leela, Jai and Vijay, who are supposed to protect Sita, themselves come as Ravana and kidnap Mother Sita. Ram is that Mahavishnu. Jai and Vijay come as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. And that Lakshmi, who is supposed to be protected by them, is kidnapped by that same Ravana. And Sri Ramachandra is going from place to place. Guru Varthe Tyakta Rajyo Vyacharadhanuvanam Padma Padbhyam Priyayam Pani Sparshak Chhamabhyam Mrijita Patharujo Yo Harindra Nujabhyam Vairupya Chur Panakya Priya Viraharusha Bhrubito Bhrovi Jimba Trastabdir Baddha Setu Khala Dava Dahano Kosalendo Vatanna Let's not get into Ramayana. <laughs> If you, if you want to be happy in this world, please don't speak about Sri Ram. Why? Because he will kidnap your heart with his pastimes. And then you will not be happy in this world because your desire to meet him will increase. Actually, Sri Ramachandra's leelas are breathtakingly beautiful. Breathtakingly beautiful because in every pastime you can see that the jivas are suffering and the Lord comes to uplift them. But Ramayana is the only pastime where the Lord comes and takes help of the jivas to relieve his suffering. To relieve his suffering. So what does this verse that we just chanted mean? Guru Varthe Tyakta Rajyo. Just because his parents asked. Kai Kai asked and Dasharat instructed. Guru Varthe. They are like Guru. Arthe for their pleasure. Guru Varthe Tyakta Rajyo. He gave up his kingdom. And Vyacharat Anuvanam. Wandered like a villager, like a forest dweller from forest to forest. Padma Padvyam Priyayam. On his soft lotus feet without a paduka. And Pani Sparshat Hamabhyam. So much so that Mother Sita couldn't tolerate and she would keep her palm. So that the lotus of the Lord's feet can step on the lotus of her palm. Pani Sparshat Hamabhyam. Mrijita Patharjo Yo Harindra Anujabhyam. And this same Lord who was being protected by Mother Sita, now had to set out to protect her. Is everyone understanding? It is quite, quite a heart-wrenching story because one wife, that is Kaikai, she asks for a thing and the husband Dasharat loses his life. And now in the next generation, the wife Sita asks for a thing, the golden deer. And then she loses her independence. And the husband Sri Ram has to go searching. Mrijita Patharujo Yo Harindranu Jabhyam, taking help of Sugriva on one side, Lakshman on the other, Hanuman on the other. Vairupya Shur Panakya Priya Vira Harusha Ropito Bhru Vijrimba. The Lord, in, in separation from his wife, was hitting the floor and crying. And the demigods were looking from the top. And offering flowers of prayers and tears that, my Lord, we have always seen you with Lakshmi, Narayan and Lakshmi, Sita and Ram, Radha and Krishna together. This is the first time we are seeing the Lord is crying in separation from his beloved. And the demigods started stepping down as monkeys. 60 billion monkeys coming down only to help Sri Ram. Sri Ram who helps monkeys like us cross the ocean of birth and death. 
is, is asking for help to cross the ocean himself with the help of monkeys. Na janma nunam mahata na saubhagam na vak na buddhi na akriti to shaheto taya visrishthan apino vanaukasas chakara sakhe bata lakshman agraja. Hanumanji says that how much can I glorify the heart of the Lord? Na janma nunam. When Hanuman was asked, what was your qualification to be close to Ram? Hanuman says, Na Janma Nunam. I had no aristocratic birth. I was, I'm a vanara. I'm a monkey. Na Janma Nunam. Mahata Na Saubhagam. I have not performed any yajnas from past life. Na Vak. Hanuman in humility is saying, I don't even know to speak. He's the greatest pandit. Atulita Baladhamam. He Mashailaba Deham. Danuja vana krishanam, jnani nama graganyam, sakala guna nidhanam vana rana madhisham, raghupati priya bhaktam, vata jatam namami. The king among poets, the king among scholars, the king among devotees, <clears throat> the son of the wind god and the dearest associate of Sri Ram, who set his body on fire and performed arati. We perform arati with wicks. And when it is on the lamp, we are not even able to hold the lamp because of the fire. Many times the arati goes, we can't even hold. So you put it on a plate and you take it around. You see? And then devotees put Dakshina on the plate in the temples. We are not even able to carry the lamp which has the wick. And Hanuman's tail is on fire. What to do? He had two options. Either extinguish or yukta vairagya sa uchyate or use that fire in the service of the Lord. Rupa Goswami Pad has said, Prapanchikataya buddhya hari sammandi vasthuna mukshubhi parityago vairagyam phalgu kathyate. That, that which is not connected to Krishna to give it up is proper. That which is connected to Krishna to use it is proper. But if there is something that could be used and you give it up, that is not renunciation. So Hanuman is saying this fire could be used in the service of the Lord. Why should I extinguish it? Yes, I may burn for a while, but that's, that's the life of a devotee. Life of a devotee is like candle. You burn, but you give light around. So he took the tail and he said, Dhyayan Suvam Stasya Yashastri Sangha. One day Guru Sri Char. One day Rama Sri Charan And the whole Lanka was burning. Look at, has anybody performed Arati like this? That smoke was seen from where Sri Ram was. So the point is, Priya viraha rusha ropito bhru vijrimba trastabdir badhasetu khala dava dahano kosalendo vatanaha. The king of Kosal Naresh, that is um, Kosal Rajya, that is Sri Ramachandra, he crossed the ocean by making a stone bridge. Actually, initially, our Bhagavatam describes that the ocean did not give way. Sri Ramachandra was sitting and meditating, and the ocean did not give way. Three days and three nights passed. And then finally, Sri Ramachandra started lifting his eyebrows. Bhagavatam describes, Bhru Vijrimba, his eyebrows started dancing in anger. And immediately, it is described, the surface of the ocean started trembling. I cannot even look at this and make it tremble. <laughs> Can anyone do it? Just look and make it tremble. The kids may do this, see. I'll show you. They are making plans, sinister plans. <laughs> but Sri Ramachandra, when he looked at the ocean, the ocean started trembling in helplessness. And Varun Dev came out and he said, My Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Sri Ramachandra said, What have you been doing for three days? <laughs> Varuna said, My Lord, you took a form which is human-like. And for human beings, I don't give way. Now suddenly you switched your role and you became God. Now it takes some time to switch characters. <laughs> so Sri Ramchandra said, because of your audacity, I will make sure that my feet doesn't touch your surface. I will make a surface of stone and climb on it. Varuna said, my Lord, in whatever way I can serve you, I'm happy. Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajamana Harana Bhava Bhaya Darunam 
ಕನ್ನವ ಕಂಜಲೋಚನ ಕಂಜ ಮುಖಕರ ಕಂಜ ಪದ ಕಂಜಾರುಣ ದಿಸ್ ಕಥಾ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಅನ್ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ವೆನ್ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಮುನಿ ವಾಸ್ ಎಂಪವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ದ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಮುನಿ ಸೆಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರೈಟ್ ಹೂ ವಿಲ್ ರೀಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಎನಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೆಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಯಾವತ್ತಿಷ್ಠಂತಿ ಗಿರಯ ಸರಿತ ಮಹಿತಲೆ ತಾವತ್ ರಾಮ ಕಥಾ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ತ್ವತ್ಕೃತ ಪ್ರಚಲಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಓ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಯಾವತ್ತಿಷ್ಠಂತಿ ಗಿರಯ ಸರಿತ ಮಹಿತಲೆ till the time the famous holy rivers of ganga yamuna saraswati narmada sindhu kaveri flow on mother earth and till the time the great hills like the himalayas and govardhan exist on mother earth yavatishthanti giraya till the time the mountains and sarita the rivers flow tav till that day rama katha kirtim tvatkrita prachalishyati i give you this benediction your adhikrit valmiki ramayan will be sung till the time the rivers and the mountains exist Feelings, I guess, so why I went and accidentally slipped into Ram Katha is because Vedanta Desikar, that's correct. Vedanta Desikar, he writes that the Shri Vatsa mark on the chest is protected by four, Shankha Chakra Gada Padma, the four hands of the Lord. But the Lord himself is protected only by two, Jai and Vijay. So now the question was, we said Brahmaji has a respiratory problem. You heard that? Brahma ji in the lotus, which is coming from the whirlpool of the navel, is having a tough time breathing. Why? Vedanta Desikar says, because that lotus is having confusion. The lotus looks at the Sudarshan Chakra and thinks it is the sun and opens up. So Brahma gets some breathing time. But immediately that lotus looks at the conch shell and thinks it's the moon. So now the time for lotus to close. So the lotus closes and Brahma is suffocating. then the lotus again looks at the conch the chakra and thinks it is the sun and opens up again breathing time for brahma then that lotus looks at the conch shell and thinks it's the moon and the lotus closes at the moon so when the lotus shrinks brahma can breathe and because this is constantly happening because the lotus is eternal the shankha chakra is eternal mahavishnu is eternal although brahma has 311 trillion 40 billion years all his life is going and doing kapal bharti pranayam is going on <laughs> hmm? he is not doing brahmri he is doing brahmi because brahma is doing brahmi <laughs> with all his four heads huh? vedanta desikar says this is the astonishing form of the supreme lord where from the head to the toe there is so much beauty let's do a quick recap what is the crown like what is the feet like What is the navel like? What is the face like? Eyes, eyebrows, hair, chest, beauty. Splitting through that is the which is like the multicolored multicolored beads. Thighs are like the toenails are like and the lines are like Brahma on the navel is breathing in and out because the lotus is opening and closing looking at the sun which is the chakra the moon which is the and at the same time it is described in the chest the position of lakshmi devi is represented by the the golden hair of shri vatsa mark and that is protected by the closet chest, chest and the, to protect our four gods the chakra while the lord is protected by yes. gaur pramanand how beautiful Vedanta Desikar says this is the external feature of the lord he said now what do i speak of the heart he says mahavishnu is unparalleled because shantakaram bhujaka shayanam look at look at the contradiction here shanta akaram akar akriti shanta namah shantaya ghoraya mudhaya gunadharmine nirvisheshaya samyaya namo jnana ghanaya cha gajendra has said this that the lord appears sometimes shanta sometimes ghora sometimes mood give me an example of shanta forms of the lord which are very peaceful 
Like you look at the Lord and you feel joy, like so much peace. Yes. Jagannath, Krishna, Ramachandra, Ranganatha, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahavishnu. Yes. Give me examples of Ugra. Narasimha, Parashuram, Varaha, Kalki, more than Varaha, Kalki. Sometimes when he's, when he's dragging the city into the ocean, yes. Or he's trying to split Jamuna into tributaries, then yes. But most of the time it's very pleasing. Give me examples when the Lord comes in a form which apparently looks mudha. Varaha, Kurma, Matsya. That's correct. Where it seems, he is not, but it seems like Tamoguni. Right? So, hmm? Rishabdev, Rishabdev is Jnana Ghanayacha. He is the abode of Sattva Gud because he is giving knowledge. Hmm. So in this way, we can see the Lord appears in so many ways. So in the Vishnu Sahasranam, he is called as Shanta Akaram, which means externally the Lord is very pleasing. And at the same time, his heart is also very pleasing. Like when Bhrigu kicked, he didn't get angry. His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, fabulous class. It's a must hear class. 2005 South India Yatra. Please hear that whole series. It is phenomenal. So there Maharaj was asked this question because Maharaj was speaking about Tirupati. And the story starts with how Brighu is going to search whether it's Brahma, Vishnu or Shiva. So Maharaj was asked about this question. Why did Brahmaji and Lord Shiva, being the greatest demigods, react in the way they did? And Maharaj said, because they wanted Brighu to go to Vishnu. If they would have tolerated, Brighu would have gone and announced that they are the Supreme Lord. So they externally showed anger as service so that Brigu thinks they are not God and he will proceed towards Vishnu. It was beautiful. I had never seen that perspective in the story. So uh, in the Vishnu Sahasranam, it's described Shanta Karam and the next term is Bhujaga Shayanam. What does Bhujaga Shayanam mean? He sleeps on the, on the serpent. Bhujaga. Bhujaga. He who moves. Uraga or Bhujaga, these are names for the snake, that which moves on the hand or that which moves on the chest, Urasi. So Bhujaga or Bhujanga, you can see is a snake. So Bhujaga Shayanam, the Lord has a bed. What type of bed does, it, does he have? Memory foam, Tempur-Pedic, <laughs> <huh? laughs> reclining mattress. His mattress is called Anantashe. So why in the Vishnu Sahasranam it says Shanta Karam and Bhujaka Shayanam? It says that he's pleasing and he sleeps on the ocean, on the snake bed. It's to say that in our room, if we have, let's say, one mosquito, it disturbs our sleep. It can disturb our peace, actually. If you have a cockroach in the room, what happens? All the kids, I've even seen adults jump. <laughs> I was in one home and the male was running. <laughs> the Prabhuji, I said, what happened? He said, cockroach. <laughs> and that Mataji was exact opposite. She said, what you're fearing as if it is a rat. He said, if it was a rat, I would have died. He said, amazing. Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes a song, Keshava Tuva Jagata Vichitra. <laughs> Your world is fascinating. So, you know, we get to see many colors of this world like that. So imagine if you have like a cockroach in the room, what happens? A lizard in the room. Rat in the room. Ecstasy. <laughs> Snake in the room. Now it's too much, right? Look at the Lord. He's sleeping on the bed of serpents and still is Shantakaram, showing us that only those devotees who have that level of tolerance, whose bhakti is still peaceful even when they are on the bed of snakes, of circumstances, of calamities, they are still peaceful, remembering the Lord. Only those people can inherit Vaikuntha. Only those who can sleep on the serpent bed of calamity and still be Shantakaram. This is why in the Vishnu Sahasranam Shantakaram, then Bhujagashayanam. Otherwise, there's no connection between being peaceful and having a snake bed. Right? Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, he writes that Mahavishnu sleeps on the serpent bed only for one purpose. Srila Chakravarti Pad writes. 
he says that all of us are sleeping on the snake bed of sense gratification and we need somebody like us to meditate on it takes a thorn to remove another thorn chakravarti pad writes the lord in no feature sleeps on a serpent bed except mahavishnu because he is kind to the living entity saying that you are also sleeping on the serpent serpent bed of sense gratification you think of me because we are of the same caste we are both sleeping on the same surface so those who are sleeping on the snake bed of sense gratification if they remember the lord who sleeps on the snake bed of ananta shesh then our desire to be bitten by that snake of sense gratification desire will go away so this is why his heart is also so sweet so in my life i have never ever ever done one exclusive class on mahavishnu because typically what happens once we come to iskon we speak about mahavishnu and then we will say he has 60 qualities and then krishna has four more and then we come to krishna <laughs> but this is the first time in my life where after speaking about 64 qualities of krishna i am saying now let's talk about the 60 quality filled mahavishnu Shri Man Narayana Narayana Narayana. Oh Lakshmi Narayana. Oh Shri Man Narayana Narayana Narayana. Lakshmi Narayana Lakshmi Shri Man Narayana 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 O Lakshmi Narayana Narayana Shri Man Narayana 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 Now you may think this name Narayana, we are chanting the names of Krishna. Is it okay to glorify Narayana like this? Absolutely okay. Why? Because you can see in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mahavishnu or Mahaprabhu, who is Mahavishnu, when he came to the house of shrivas thakur and it was the time of shrivas thakur's father's um, shraddha ceremony shrivas thakur had asked chaitanya mahaprabhu what is that mantra that i should chant to liberate my father and mahavishnu said vishnu sahasrana our mahaprabhu mahaprabhu in chaitanya charitamrita you can see in the section of shrivas thakur's father's shraddha ceremony mahaprabhu had said shaitanya mahaprabhu had said you should chant the brihad sahasranam or the vishnu sahasranam so any time please remember if you have your fathers or mothers or any shraddha following this instruction of chaitanya mahaprabhu you can chant the vishnu sahasranam because mahaprabhu instructed that to shrivas thakur so in this way we offer our obeisances at the lotus feet of narayana the supreme lord whose name protected ajamil and shila jeeva goswami this is the last point of the day shila jeeva goswami has written a book on sanskrit grammar it is called shri hari naam amrita vyakaranam there the first sutra that he gives he says that all the syllables of sanskrit grammar and musical notes it is believed they come from the damru of shankar bhagavan therefore they are called maheshwara sutra that which comes from mahesh lord shiva but shila jeeva goswami says in my humble opinion it comes from narayana the sutra is please repeat narayanat udbhutoyam varnakramah all the varnakrama all the syllables they come from narayana so in that commentary shila jeeva goswami has written some meanings of the word narayana so with that i would like to conclude the class what is the meaning of the word narayana anybody yes prabhu beautiful the resting place for all the jeevas shila jeeva goswami pad says one jeeva is called nara what is he called nara and the resting the uh, the plural usage of all the jeevas is called nara what is it called and the word ayana means resting place so the resting place for all the living beings is nara plus ayana narayana 
Hmm? That's one meaning. Another meaning? Who is spread everywhere? That is Vishnu. So, Vyapnoti, he who is present everywhere. That is, but Vishnu and Narayana are same only. So one more meaning of the word Narayana is, the word Nara means the sweat. When Mahavishnu is creating, there's perspiration that comes through his body. And Ayana means to rest. So he who is resting on the ocean of his own perspiration is called Narayana. But Srila Jiva Goswami says, the meaning that is very dear to me, he says, to his heart. What is that? He says, Ayana means to take shelter, correct? And Nara means living beings in plural usage. So we said those who take shelter, that he who is the resting place for all living beings is Narayana. But Srila Jiva Goswami flips it backward. He said, Nara refers to Prajbasis. And Ayana means to take shelter. Narayana is the name of that Krishna who comes as a young boy taking shelter of all the Brajbasis. <laughs> he goes to his mother when he is hungry. He goes to his friends when he has to play. So in this way, he who is taking shelter of the human-like Brajbasis and performs beautiful Krishna Leela is Narayana. Gaura Premanande! Srila Prabhupada Dikhi! Gaura Premanande! So generally we have classes on, you know, typically we have classes on what are some lessons we can learn, practical application, you know, this and that. But sometimes you need classes where you just hear about the form of the Lord. Rup Dhyan. Enough of, um, you know, like uh, corporatizing the leelas and saying, you know, like this is what we learn, this is what we learn. Yes, that's an aspect. But sometimes it's just pleasing to the heart to hear about the Lord and just let go to be absorbed for an hour. <laughs> Any comments, any questions, anybody? Either virtually or in person? Sure, sure. There's a mic here. Harina Prabhuji. Jai Vijay, any questions? Can you hear us, Prabhuji? We are there. Take it Education yeah. Prabhupada. Yeah. The realization, like for example, uh, you know, the uh, Ravanas Maharaj's uh, example of uh, Rama and Shiva spent very little option. Like that, to me, math and all these things, we have different logic to solve the problem. Yeah. Same way, this uh, our <coughs> Acharyas give unbelievable logic yes. for everything that we can't even imagine. Absolutely. These logics exist. Absolutely. And uh, I was just uh, getting amazed by how different logics are applied on the Thank you, Prabhu. Didn't you perform the um, Prabhupada Puja this morning? Yeah. Yeah, I saw you online. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Just like beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, nectar lies in the ear of the listener. So thank you. Because I have one mouth, you have two ears. So <laughs> no questions. Okay. So any questions in, in town here? Yes, Krishna Murali Prabhu. Meanings of Vishnu. Ah. Uh, how much time do we have? <laughs> no time. Five minutes? Can I take? 
I hope I'm not uh, tossing on the hunger factor of the of the heart. Okay. So please give me a couple of minutes and I'll I'll try to elaborate that. In Sanskrit, the word uh, Vishnu, and actually Srila Jiva Goswami has defined this. Hmm? Um, Srila Jiva Goswami says, just like our Damodar Prasad Prabhu mentioned uh, in relation to the name Narayana, Srila Jiva Goswami says, Vyapnoti, he who is present everywhere, and Vishate, he who enters. So it's quite fascinating. Um, it's quite fascinating that in this world, when someone creates something, yeah, so what I was mentioning is, in the, it's quite fascinating, in this world, when someone creates something, they stay away, and their creation is somewhere, like for example, if I create this watch, I'm outside this watch, but Vishnu is quite a fascinating creator, where he creates and enters his own creation. He is the only personality who does it. Srila Jiva Goswami writes. Like, I may create this harmonium. I may. I hardly can play it. I forget about making it. But still, I'm outside. And I can never enter it. Right? But Vishnu, Vyapanoti, he's present everywhere. And Vishate, he always enters his own creation. That is Vishnu. Now, having said that, it is said that this name Vishnu is also the name for Krishna. This is why there's a... There's an eternal controversy of whether it's Vrindaye, Tulasi Devi, Priyaye, Keshava, Sicha, Vishnu Bhakti Prate Devi or Krishna Bhakti Prate Devi. And some devotees, just to be safe, they do this. Vrindaye, Tulasi Devi, Priyaye, Keshava, Sicha, Vishnu Bhakti Prate, first time, Vrindaye, Tulasi Devi, Priyaye, Keshava, Krishna Bhakti Prate Devi, second time. And then just to sandwich it again, Vrindaye, Tulasi Devi, Priyaye, Vishnu Bhakti, so Vishnu, Krishna, Vishnu. So, you know. And if you're Nrihari Prabhu, then you will sing it as well. Vrindai Tulasi Devi Priya Keshavasya Cha Vishnu Bhakti Prate Devi Satyavatya Namo Namaha. The first time I heard it, I said, wait a minute, that is like Choti Choti Gaiya Chote Chote Gaal Chota Samero Madana Gopa. Prabhuji sings with so much sweetness and sincerity. So this name Vishnu has been used in so many other places also for Krishna. Hmm? So like the original text says Vishnu Bhakti Pratadevi. That's how Vyasadeva has given it. That's one. Secondly, there's, there's a verse in the Padma Puran which says, as much as Radharani is, oh, Krishna is uh, dear to Radharani, so much even Radha Kund is dear to Krishna. Hmm? So there Yatha Radha Priya Vishnu. Kundam Priyam Tatha. Now, Radha and Krishna should, should be a pair. And Lakshmi and Vishnu. But the verse is Yatha Radha Priya Vishnu. Tasya Kundam Priyam Tatha. Sarva Gopeshu Saiveka Vishnu Atyanta Vallabha. The word Vishnu comes twice in the same verse for Krishna. Another example is Vikriditam Vrajavadhu Viridamcha Vishnu. In 10th Canto, Shukdev Goswami says this verse. Vikriditam Vrajavadhu Viridamcha Vishnu. Shraddhan Vitavna Shunaya Atha Varna Yetya. Bhaktim param bhagavati pratyalabhyakamam ridrogam ashu apahinoti achirena dhiraha. There he talks about Krishna's dancing. And he says, Vikriditam, this dancing of Krishna, Vraja Vadhu, Bhiridam cha Vishnu. Now, actually, if you think Vishnu doesn't dance, so the one who is dancing and who is called as Vishnu is actually Krishna. So Krishna is called Vishnu. Now you may say, well, you define Vishnu as someone who enters and he who is present everywhere. So how is he Vishnu? Oh, it's because in Vrindavan, Krishna creates a problem and enters to solve it. <laughs> <laughs> Vishate, he who enters, he enters all homes. And because he's stealing butter, entering all homes, he's Vyapnoti, he's present everywhere. Uh, who is more Vishnu? Is it Vishnu or Krishna? It's actually Krishna because in the heart of the Brajbasis, Vishnu is not existing. It's Krishna. So Krishna is more Vyapnoti <laughs> than even Vishnu. Because in the heart of the Brajbasis, like Mother Yashoda and Nanda Baba, it's Krishna and not Vishnu. Huh? So in this way, the word Vishnu means he who is all-pervading and he who enters his own creation. But at the same time, that is also with Praman, used for Krishna as well. And to just to complete the loop, in Shastra, it is Vishnu Bhakti Patidhi. <laughs> yes, Braja Kripa Prabhu. 
Please don't ask me a tough question. <laughs> Very technical person. So I'm scared of Prabhuji's questions. It is described that first of all, is everyone hearing the question? Could everyone hear the question? Okay, so Braj Kripa Prabhu is asking this question that Janama Safalatar Krishna Darshana Jar Bhagya Huyache Ekbar. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that success category or success criteria is to have darshan of Krishna. So, how does that darshan take place? And at what stage of devotion does that darshan take place? Is the question. So, our Acharyas describe that first of all, darshan takes place in the heart. That's step one. First, darshan will happen in the heart. And you can see so many praman for that. Like, for example, in the Damodrashtakam, you can see. Varam Deva Moksham Na Moksha Vadim Va Nachanyam Prineham Vareshada Piha Idam Te Vapu Natha Gopala Bala Sada Me Mana Syave Rastam Kimanye. My Lord, Varam Deva Moksham Na Moksha Vadim Va Nachanyam Prineham Vareshada Piha. Oh, my dear Lord, I don't ask you for anything. I don't want to ask you anything. Without me asking and doing bhajan, you're giving me so much. But if there's one thing I want to ask you, the only thing I will ask you, idam te vapuhu, this form of your, my Lord, Natha Gopala Balam, as a baby with Mother Yashoda, sada me manasi avir. Avir means avir bhav, appear. May this form appear in my heart. Sada me manasi avir. Astham kim anyay. If I have that, what else will I ask for? Anyay astham kim. So let it appear in my heart. When you want something, you have to say it more than once. So in the next verse, he says, Idam te mukham bojam atyanta niler britam kuntalai snigdar teishtya gopya Satyavratrishi says, so Krishna is asking, you want darshan in the heart? Satyavratrishi says, yes. Krishna says, how should I look? What should my form be? Krishna is asking, so Satyavratrishi says, idam te mukham bojam. It should, it should be Krishna with the same face, lotus face. Atyanta nile, pritam kuntalai. And the hair should be covered with locks of soft black hair. And who should be next to you? Mother Yashoda kissing you on both cheeks. Idam te mukham bojam, atyanta nile, pritam kuntalai, snigdha. Snigdha means out of affection. Rakta ischa gopya. Your cheek should have become reddish, oh baby Gopal, because of the kisses of Mother Yashoda. How many times? Muhus chumbitam bimba rakta dharam me. And this form of yours, my lord, being kissed by Mother Yashoda again and again on both cheeks. Sada me manasya ver. Astham ki manye. If I have this, then I don't need anything else. Let this form appear in my heart. Twice he says. Let it appear in my heart. Then you can see in Brahma Samhita, Premanjana Churita, Bhakti Vilochanena, Santa, Sadaiva, Ridayeshu Vilokayanti. Sadhus have darshan in the heart first. Dhruva Maharaj first had darshan in the heart. Bhakti Muhu Pravahatam Tvaime Prasango Bhuya Dananta Mahatama Malashayanam my Lord, now that I have seen you in my heart, I don't want anything else. Please appear before me. And Vishnu said, you open your eyes, I am in front of you. So first heart has darshan. And then when the person opens his eyes, he's not able to see that same form. Then there is glani, there is pida, there is vyatha, there is Pain. And Chaitanya Charitamrit describes this pain is Visha Amrita Milan, is the meeting of nectar and poison. 
The nectar is when he closes his eyes, the devotee, he sees darshan of Krishna. But the poison is when he opens his eyes, he can see that Lord around. Hmm? And Kaviraj Goswami gives an example for this. He says it is like drinking hot sugar cane juice. How is hot sugar cane juice? Kaviraj Goswami says, it is so sweet that you feel like drinking. But it is so hot that you can't drink. It is sweet sugar cane. You can spit it out. But it is so hot you can't drink it. But you want it. Our Kaviraj Goswami has experienced and is giving an example. So initially the, the living entity, the Acharya, he is having Darshan of Krishna. And he's having darshan of Krishna in the heart. Kadachit kalindi tata vipina sangeeta karavo. He sees darshan of Krishna in the heart. And then when Sripad Adi Shankaracharya opens his eyes, he can see that Krishna. Therefore, Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami Bhavatume. My Lord, that you have appeared in my heart, why don't you come in front of my eyes? Bilbo Mangal Thakur is Netrahin. Without eyes. So he says, Hey Deva, oh Krishna, hey Daita, Bhuvanaika Bandho, hey Krishna, hey Chapala, hey Karunaika Sindho, hey Nath, hey Ramana, ha Nayana Bhirama. He's calling out to Krishna and then he opens his eyes and he says, He can see that Krishna. Ha ha, Kadanu Bhavitasi Padam Drishorme. When or oh, when will you appear on the pathway of my eyes? So this is the second stage. First stage is Darshan here. Second stage is where now he's not able to see ahead and there is pain. Rupa Goswami Pad has also said this. Hmm? When oh when will that Mahaprabhu who is giving darshan in the heart appear before my eyes? So this is the second stage. And then because of the fire of separation, the person cannot live. He calls out to Krishna. Huh? It's quite fascinating, dear devotee. I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. Can I speak a little more? So the Acharya then writes that to extinguish the forest fire on the heart. Please everyone chant. Sharad Jotsna Sindho Avakalanaya Jata Yamuna Brahmadhavan Yosmin Hari Virahata Parnava Eva Nimagno Murchala Payasi Nivasan Ratri Mahila Prabhata Prapta Sway Avatusa Shachi Sunu Ihanaha Kaviraj Goswami describes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is burning in this state where he's having darshan in the heart, but he's not able to see outside. And when he's able to see outside, as soon as he goes close, the darshan is gone. So what is happening? He jumps into the ocean thinking that it is Yamuna. Kaviraj Goswami says, this is not Brahm. Brahm means illusion. It is Vibrahma. Vibrahma means madness of love. Kaviraj Goswami says, when someone burns their finger, what's the first thing we will tell them? Put it under cold water or ice, right? What, what when the whole body is burning? You will tell them to jump into a river or a pond. What if the heart, soul, super soul, the body, everything is burning in separation? You have to jump into an ocean. Hari viraha tapa aranava eva. Kaviraj Goswami describes Mahaprabhu's body was a forest fire in separation from Krishna and no water of this world will pacify. So he jumped into the ocean to pacify. So this is the next stage. And after that comes a stage where the person can see the Leela with his eyes open and with his eyes closed. What is that state? Please everyone chant. Chapandanda Ratri Dine Jane na Radha Govinda Vine Chapandanda Ratri Dine Jane na Radha Govinda Vine Chari Dandi Shuthi Thake 
स्वप्ने राधा गोविंद देखे देन इज द स्टेज ऑफ शिला रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी वेयर It is described. Chappan dhanda ratri dinay jane na Radha Govind dinay. Twenty two and a half hours he would have his eyes open and he would only see Radha Krishna. And then one and a half hours chari dandi shuti thake he would go to sleep. Swapne Radha Govind dekhe. And sleep also he would see. So much so that when there is a tiger next to him, Radha Rani comes. Or when there is heat, Radha Rani comes and tiger next Krishna is coming to protect. Not the devotee is going to see have darshan. The Lord comes to take darshan of the devotee. So in this way, progressively, it is seen. And at what level this darshan takes place? It is only at the level of bhava bhakti, according to Madhuri Kadambini. Shri Lavishna Chakravarti Thakur. For more details, you can enroll to Amrita Nanda Prabhu's ongoing Madhuri Kadambini series. <laughs> Where Prabhuji will heal? Oh, sorry, heal. <laughs> <laughs> he will heal your heart and so both <laughs> is that okay for me that's the systematic our acharyas have given everything everything answers to all questions subtle and gross are given and it's all experiential as we go on this path performing bhajan initially shastra is used to answer questions then as one is doing bhajan and going ahead experience realization will be the answer and to cross check you can see in shastra experience becomes first the person will answer out of experience and then look at the verse is it oh, this is cross verifying the experience not the other way pratyaksha avagamam dharmam susukham karma today we had uh, Verses from Bhagavad Gita also, Chaitanya Charita Amrit also, Vishnu Sahasranam, Vedanta Desikar, Rama, Kalidha, Suprabhat. All of you are so sweet, coming from different devotional inclinations. That by your presence, all of this is coming out. Gaur Premanandi. So now we will do five minutes of kirtan, and then we'll have prasad. More. <laughs> Chalo, we'll do five minutes kirtan, and then we can have prasad. So all of us, all the devotees, can have prasad. Fifteen minutes. Okay. <laughs> Chalo, we'll do stand up kirtan because we've been sitting for some time. Portland yatra ki jai, Seattle yatra ki jai. Gaur premanante. No, no. नहीं है इनका इंक्लिनेशन कैन बी पॉजिटिवली डोटेड नहीं तो क्लास में बजाते हो इनको कीर्तन में नहीं दिया तो